dozen uh, people joining us today, uh, out external users. So don't feel like you can't speak up. Uh, if there's something you're wondering, even if it's a big picture question, if you're wondering it, I guarantee you at least half the rest, half of the other participants are wondering the same thing. So go ahead and, and throw it out there for the, for the question to the, to the group. Okay, I think we're holding at about at about 12 attendees for this group, so let's get started here. Uh, for anyone who might have missed it, I'm Brian Mack, and uh, Aaron Fredrickson and I are both arbitrators in the ADR unit at, here at DLI. Uh, we work at DLI, we're not an outside contractor, so we are going to be giving you uh, this tour in a bit more detail on external dispute resolution in campus. We've got Chris Raymond with us, also a co-worker of ours from ADR that many of you may know, uh, to help us with any technical issues, and Yashika is here to help us with the overall system to make sure this WebEx goes and runs smoothly like it has been for these last few weeks. We have a schedule of about two hours for today, but Aaron and I can guarantee you that it won't take that long to get through this material. We will stay as long as you all need if you've got additional questions. But we're pretty confident we're going to get you out of here and back to your regular work by about an hour 20. We've got, uh, this is, looks like we've got probably a fair number of paralegals and possibly some claim adjusters here. We may have a couple of lawyers also. Today is not going to be a full detailed one-on-one -on -one granular tutorial on exactly what to do and exactly everything related to dispute resolution because as we might have mentioned to you guys in the 101 and the 201 sessions that will take time that no one would be willing to voluntarily give us and we don't want to do that to you so this is again another tr another uh, presentation to try to build up your confidence uh, in, in using campus and in figuring some things out yourself and in getting comfortable with what to expect when campus goes live on October or sorry on August 31st one thing that a lot of you have been waiting for and you should have been looking forward to this is the user that user manual for you external users of campus is ready right now. So it's on the DLI website. If under, if you go to businesses under the section for campus, to the section on training, you should see the link to get it. It's about 170 pages. Don't worry, you don't have to read every single one of those 170 pages. Just like if there were a manual for how to use Word or Excel, there it might be a 500 page manual, but ultimately you're only gonna need to use or worry about those things that, you, that actually affect you. So it's a good manual. Uh, Aaron and I have spent a lot of time with it and it has helped us a lot. So I'm sure it'll be helpful for you guys also. If Brian, I thought you we were doing don't. a quiz today. <laughs> the quiz is coming. I hope you guys are, are ready. It's only an hour and 20 presentation, but the quiz is going to be about two hours. Is that right, Aaron? Well, I thought we were holding people until about seven o'clock tonight. So uh... Uh, seven o'clock tonight. That's it. And now, yeah, an hour 20 for the intro. That's what we're doing. <laughs> No, but really, it's going to be about an hour 20. So use the user, look for the user manual. And if any of you guys can't find it, by all means, just, just email me or Aaron, and we'll be happy to send the link over to you. Here's our agenda. Not too many things on it. Don't worry about the times. We are not going to strictly follow that. In fact, I'm not going to follow that at all. We're just going to show you what we want you, what we think would be helpful for you guys. We, we all know about uh, the priorities of, of the uh, Work Compact to support the resolution of disputes. This is what we do at ADR, of course, and the campus system is going to be the vehicle through which we do this going forward. And when we talk about disputes, we're talking about your admin conferences, your med requests, your rehab requests, and mediations we also consider to be dispute resolution, even though there might not be a claim petition, there might not be a med request, still we call mediations 
disputes for these purposes. All right, and here's again the forms we all know and love. Well, actually, we don't use a formal request for mediation form, but for campus purposes, we're going to have it. We're going to consider it uh, generated just like a, re uh, a rehab request, a med request, or a request for cert. So these are the ones you all know about already. Just a bit of a of a of a recap. Everybody knows if you want to right now the way we do things, you want to or the way we submit things is you prepare your request for or your request for assistance or your request for mediation by by way of an email, and you submit those pleadings or those forms in, and then we decide if we set up a mediation or we certify it or we set it for a conference. That is what happens right now. We're still going to have those those uh, primary uh, vehicles for dispute resolution, but we're just going to be submitting them in a bit different way now. So when we say we've got a single starting point and that we allow you guys to drive what's going to happen, all we're really talking about is the way you're submitting things. The process is going to be the same. You're still going to have a rehab request submitted. We're going to certify it. We're going to set it for conference and we're going to make a decision. The difference is again just on the submission. So in the submission in campus, it's not going to have rehab request or med request right at the beginning. It's going to start with you're going to look for the claim first. Then you're going to decide what kind of a dispute we have on the claim and so on and so forth until you ultimately generate that rehab request or med request or request for cert or a request for media. And this is a kind of another chart to take to kind of look at it in a slightly different way. Everything we do in campus starts by well, all of your much of what you guys are going to be doing, which is your pleadings. That's all going to pretty much start in the same way. You get into campus, and then you go from there for what it is you want to file, what it is you want to generate. All right. This is the form. Uh, or this slide here is one that I think Aaron's had some good advice on when we've had talked to other groups here that this might be one you want to just have up on your on your um, on your bulletin board for a little while. You're going to throw this thing up there because it might give you a bit of a of a reminder, a bit of a crutch for how you're going to file the file things, how you're going to generate things. It ultimately, I mean, my guess is within a week this will be covered up with something else, and then when you guys retire, when was that retirement date for you, Aaron? I know you know that date. My uh, retirement date is on February 14th, uh, 2042. And I could probably tell you here, uh, if you give me another few seconds. So I'm going to retire <laughs> in 7,846 days, 18 hours, 48 minutes, and 53 seconds. So, so we digress, <laughs> but uh, Aaron knows exactly when he's leaving. And uh, for for those of you, whether you know that date or not, there's a good chance that by the time you guys leave, this form will be all covered up, covered up with all kinds of other things. But for a bit of a help in the first few days or first week or so, this might be a helpful flowchart. It explains in a bit more detail what I was just kind of overviewing, which is if you want to file something, you're going to first, you're going to locate the claim. So it's going to be on George Jetson or whoever it might be. You're going to pick the claim. If you can't find the claim, you can add more than one claim, which is 1B. Under if you don't find a claim in the system, like maybe it, it hasn't been filed yet, it's not in the system. I know some of you find that happen when you guys give us a call. We've got no WID, we've got nothing because it's not there. This doesn't stop you. In this case, if you want to file that medical request and there's and you don't, you can't locate the claim under number one, on 1C, you can create what we call a claim shell. It's kind of like a holding box, a temporary file. Yeah, a temporary file is a good way to put it, where you can, where we can create something temporary so that you can still file what you want to file. So now that you found the claim, you found George Jetson's claim, you're going to choose what you want to do. Mediate, have a conference, which is, of course, how we resolve the med requests and the rehab requests. 
uh, or a certification. And then you go through the issues and by typing in these these bits of data, like what action you want, what the issues are, who are the parties, you are in fact generating ultimately, which you can see at the bottom of this screen, the pleading that you want to file, which is the re the rehab request, the med request, request for cert or request for mediation. So you're ultimately still getting what you, the same pleadings you've been working with before. You're just now generating those pleadings in the system. So you're not going to be uh, writing up a med request and then making copies of the med request or uploading your med request. You're going to create the med request right here and then you'll be uploading whatever attachments you want to attach to the med request or the rehab request. Now that's that's important for you guys to to understand, and if you don't fully get it right now, you will within a few days of going live on campus, but I'm gonna just pause for a second to let that sink in a bit to see if anyone's got any questions about the big picture here about what we're doing with pleadings and how we're, how we're getting those pleadings filed in campus. So if you've got any questions, throw them up there in the chat. Aaron, if you've got anything else that you wanna uh, draw attention to, go ahead, otherwise we'll move on in a minute. No, unless you want to hear an update on my retirement time. Give us the update, Aaron. Uh, it's probably give or take a few seconds. That's your update? Yes. Okay, thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So we don't have any questions on this big picture. So that's probably a good thing. And if you guys are, there's only about 13 of you. So if you're really feeling like I'm fully not getting this, let we invite you, let us know, we don't mind. Just a few weeks ago, Aaron and I were in the same place of, we didn't, we just do, we're having a hard time with this thing. And we worked it through and we're getting it now. So don't feel bad if you guys are, if you guys are having a hard time right now, our goal here is to prepare you for the two hour test so that we, which you have to pass in order to, you know, register in a couple of weeks. Just kidding. No two hour test. You'll be able to register whether you, with no test, it's okay. All right. So what uh, this, now we're talking about looking at the actual system. Now that I've kind of given you a more detail overview, uh, this is what steps you're going to take. Again, I'm not going to be going through every single step that you're going to take, every single click, because you don't want to sit through that. I'll put all 13 of you to sleep. Or, well, Aaron might not, but I think I probably would. So um, you, when you get into campus, you're going to see your dashboard. Everybody's going to see pretty much the same thing, and you're going to choose what you want to do. And it's probably going to be file a pleading because that's what your lawyers are having you guys do. And to do that, you're going to hit that number two box, which is initiate a dispute. We're going to get a little closer in case your eyes are bad like mine and can't see it very well. I'm actually going to just expand this a little bit for you guys. So with this filing, and filings basically consider that like pleadings, then you can choose what kind of pleading, what kind of filing you want to do, and starting a dispute because a med request or a rehab request is a dispute and you're going to click that and then you follow the drop downs so um, once you've started uh, once you've clicked that you want to start a dispute you're going to be find you're going to be locating that claim the claim the injury the injury uh, the date of injury claim is the claim here so if a guy got hurt on august 1 of 2000 that's the claim. If you got hurt on August 10th, 2000, that's going to be another claim. So once you've found that claim, because you don't, you, you can't file the medical request unless you know which claim you're going to file it on, then you can see various details about the claim, the people, places, parties, etc. And you can use that as needed to start to build out the, the pleading. And we call those the case or the dispute that you want to do. So I am now, this demo has us demo a couple of different things for you, a couple of different kinds of disputes. We may not do every one of them, 
to be able to have you get an appreciation for what kinds of things you do rather than again give you something you have to take detailed notes on for how do I do a med request versus how do I do a rehab request. I want you to be able to see how do I do a dispute and then you guys can pick yourselves and see for yourselves how you can fork it off in different directions. So I'm going to log in as Aaron Fredrickson here just because in his profile works a little better than mine. Um, um, that's actually Chuck Finley that you're uh, signing into, Mr. Yes, Mark. Aaron's doppelganger, Chuck Finley, for those of you who watch uh, Burn Notice. So this is what Chuck Finley is going to see, and this is what all of you are going to see. Uh, everyone is going to, whether you're a paralegal or a legal secretary or a lawyer who's got a user account within campus, and by the way, Tell your bosses, tell your firms, tell your insurance companies that you work for, your managers, uh, that you guys have got to get ready to register as a user as soon as you want to start building something in this system because only users can use the system. And then when you're a user, you're going to need to be brought in to a team on your firm or in the insurance company or whatever other entity, QRC firm that you may be in if you want to do something. But this is what it's going to look like. The open claims you've got, upcoming events. Events are those things which are like scheduled things. The rehab conference is an event. The mediation is an event. And any new documents that come in, any new pleadings that come in, various notifications, calendar. Over here we have your claims. These are, again, the injury claim itself, the big red rope, so to speak. The disputes, the disputes would be a med request, a rehab request, and the forms, these are going to be the pleadings you filed. Okay, so let's start a dispute. Anything you want to add, Aaron, before we get into this, and you can certainly give some, by all means, give any commentary you think is appropriate as I'm going through it. Um, my only comment is, is that Brian and I have spent a lot of time in this particular system. And when I first started out, um, I was kind of frustrated as I typically am with any new thing that I, I tackle. Uh, but I've really found a confidence in using this. And I think you're going to be successful in it. If I can figure it out, you can figure it out. And I really like kind of the, the look and feel of this. And we talked about some of the things um, on this dashboard here in the 101 course, like submitting a filing and really forcing yourself to forget what you know now about starting things using a form and thinking the campus way um, the transaction and uh, just walking through it step by step, the kind of the one point of contact, I think, is the overall feel that they wanted. But, uh, trust me, the more that you use this system, uh, the easier it's going to get. And I think, too, it's going to benefit all interested stakeholders, whether you represent injured em employees or defense interests. All right, thanks, Aaron. So let's go in and do uh, and do what a lot of you guys are going to be doing, which is you want to get a pleading done. You want to get, say, a rehab request or a medical request done. What we're going to do is you want to submit a filing. You get another way to look at that. It'd be like a pleading. So click on that. Let's take a look at the drop down. One of the things that you're going to be doing an awful lot will be this initiating a dispute. So let's just click on it. And hopefully you'll see some of again some of what we went through in 201, I believe, for if most of you have done that, where there's a lot of intuitive this system. So the first thing they want you to do is to locate that claim, because like I told you, you you can't file a rehab request unless you know what the um, you know who you're filing it on. So in this case, we know the um, let's see, I you can do it by WID, which in this case, we have new numbers, and that will basically be your WID for the employee with a zero in front of it. But I happen to know the, the uh, new number that's assigned to just about everything in campus. A user is going to have a JCN number, an employer is going to have a JCN, an employee will, a dispute has a JCN number. I happen to know that there's a, there's a JCN number for one of these claims 
Um, and, uh, oops. I'm just going to start with this. So CL 07 15 10 305. And I know that relates to George Jetson. So we've Chris, heard you guys. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. I was just going to say the JCN has actually been here all along. We just never paid attention to it. It was part of our way before we had our Informix imaging system. Uh, we had this old DOS like thing called mapper the jcn's always been there it stands for jurisdictional claim numbers you see we just never ever used it and now hmm. it's um got a function so you know, right. 50 years we finally have a use for it or being efficient then so you guys might say well what if i don't know the jcn well Hopefully, when you file something, you're gonna you're gonna write it down just like you might write down the wit or the social. And as you guys will often give us a call and say, "What's the wit on such and such?" We might be able to help you out if you need a JCN number too. So, this is the information I know on Jetson. So, and again, I'm thinking I could file a rehab request of some sort. So now uh, they've picked the that's the claim, and the claim again is the injury it's the big red rope file big red rope file for that specific injury on 7 1 of 2020. no related claims that's fine so we're going to keep moving on here so they want to know now who are we representing so we're going to pick one and it's so it's telling us we're at number three got to identify a party and this is going to be you'll see when you go through this starting the 31st a lot of these filings a lot of these pleadings are going to be building out in a similar way so we're starting to build our, our plea and I'm going to say I'm going to be uh, representing George Jetson in this one. And I could have chosen the others also identify the other parties in this dispute. Yeah, these guys are going to be part of this dispute. I think I'm going to. Yeah, let's see here. Go to next. Now, what do we want? This is where we're starting to break into med request versus rehab request. So in this case, I'm going to want a rehab conference or sorry, uh, yeah, a rehab conference. So it's going to be an admin conference. I want. What are what's the reason here? We start really breaking it out. So I want rehab issue. It's a rehab issue. And prompting me to ask for more information or to give it more information. What do I want? Let's say it's a service. I guess I'm going to want to be adding uh, um, exploration of retraining maybe. So a service, what am I looking for? Plan content change, uh, the issue type of plan change. And I'm just following down with the, the lines that have an asterisk by them. They're going to be different depending on what form you're trying to do, but watch for the asterisks. So any specific details. So request um, exploration of retraining. Okay. And I can go forward. So now it's given me a little summary. I can attach something now because maybe I've got a couple of records that I want to submit to go along with that rehab request. So let's upload something. Drag and drop out of your G drive, your home, whatever it might be that you have in your offices. It's got to be in a PDF. Uh, I don't know why. You can't attach a word. So if you've got Word documents, put them into PDF format. Right now, we're going to go straight to the type. It's going to be a 106 conference, and we'll just say um, exhibit for um, request for exploration spelled that wrong and upload it so again we're not having to we're not needing to make six copies of all of our exhibits to mail out to everybody we're able to just upload it one time and the details of our request we do want to put some more information here this uh, will be i believe the narrative section on the pay on the page two of those rehab requests or med requests so i'm just going to say narrative explanation whoops narrative explanation of um, exploration i think again while brian's kind of typing in some of this information. We're still doing the same functions that we've always done. 
we're just doing them a different way. And at least I like it the more that I've demonstrated some of these is that uh, it, 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 it's a single starting point and, you know, hopefully to helping new attorneys and paralegals uh, understanding uh, uh, the workers' compensation system will, will, uh, will make it a lot easier. So, and uh, Chuck Finley has the best attorney ID number ever, so. <laughs> Chris is mocking my homeland. That's okay, Chris, you can do that. So Aaron, maybe you could explain what's happening here then for everybody. Sure, well, one of the benefits as we learned in Campus 101 is that uh, this allows for a safe and secure and immediate interchange. And in this particular instance, Brian is uh, doing an affidavit of service. And as we see, uh, Los Pollos Hermanos uh, is inside the system already along with um, the insurance carrier. The method of service is gonna be electronic. So uh, once uh, Brian uh, completes this process, there'll be an instantaneous and secure um, service um on uh the required parties uh brian's also noted that someone needs to be added to the system uh bob's rehab is not in the system right now what brian is doing is he is uh, uh creating uh the information for uh bob's rehab and so he's going to have to serve bob's rehab by mail so this will require a legal assistant or attorney to print out the affidavit of service and mail the documents, but they'll only have to do it to Bob's rehab and not the employer and insurer. Yep. All right, so I've just about got this done then. I'm doing it for Charles Finley, that's me right now. But uh, for those of you who are not attorneys, by getting given the proper accesses and permissions in campus, you will be able to do this for the attorneys you work for. And here we go. So what's gonna happen now is instead of having to print out six copies, I've now generated a rehab request and I've served it electronically on most of the people but that QRC that I added, I'll, I still have one affidavit of service, but I simply need to copy it, like Aaron said, or print it out and drop it in the mail to the QRC. Whoop. I wish I would have written down that CL, that C, that DS number. Well, let's see what I can see if I can find it here. Here's a form that I, the, here's the my forms back in my main queue. And let's update it. This might be it. If it's if it's not the one that I submitted now, it'll be the one I did a little earlier. Let's take a look. Oh, here it is. Yep, this is the one. So this is the rehab request that you all know and love. It's formatted a little differently, but it's pretty much the same thing. You've got, it's the rehab request, it's got the, basically here's your caption, what you're looking for, a conference, change in the plan, exploration of retraining. And I just built that thing out. It's, it's filed by me today. the affidavit of service done. Now, what I'm gonna do though, is, uh, let me see. What I could have done is gone back into, into the dispute um, and look at the attachments that I, that I attached also to it. So you can see not only the form that you created, but the attachments that you uploaded. All right, let's go back to, so before I leave this screen, do we have any, if anyone's got any questions about the concept of what we did here, let us know. 
this was just a rehab dispute that we did, but this is the kind of process that campus is going to take you through for whatever it might be that you're going to do. If you're filing a rehab request to terminate services, it's going to look a little different. A medical request for reimbursement of chiropractic payments, it's going to look a little different, but it's going to be following the same basic structure. So hopefully when you guys go live on August 31st, you're going to be able to close to hit the ground running by knowing what you're looking for. Okay, we're going to do one more short demo on the concept of a claim shell. You guys will be hearing this a number of times, and like I've started to tell you or told you a little bit earlier on, the claim shell is basically like a temporary red rope is a way to look at it. It's not where if you don't have a claim already at here at DLI, you can still submit your filing. It'll just send it into a temporary folder and then our staff at DLI will look at it and they'll figure out, hey, there really is an, a file of that name. They just had the, the spelling a little off or a digit off, or maybe it really is an unreported claim and they'll get that claim generated or reach out to whichever parties they need to submit the FROI or whatever they need to do. So. Sometimes, actually, I worried that I wondered this myself, and maybe Aaron, you did too. Chris, you know a whole lot more than us. Maybe you didn't, but I wondered sometimes. Well, how do I do a claim shell versus a, uh, a, a you know, a, a normal claim or a normal initiation of dispute? How do I know which one is which? I'm just going to show you a little bit of a change, and you'll see how simple it is. So, say I want to do a rehab request, and I want to initiate. I'll be initiating that dispute. Are the same way, except maybe I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even sure what the G, what the JCN is. So I'm just going to put in something there, and I know the last name is uh, Gamgee, and I I don't know any more than that. I guess I have to put in a full one. So I'm going to put in something which includes enough digits. There. So I know that number is wrong because I don't even So instead of, whereas I did this the, the first time uh, and it pulled up the George Jetson cl uh, claim for me, this time the system didn't recognize that there's anything in the system with a file number of that I, you know, the just gibberish I gave it and the last name of Gamgee. So, it's now saying, hey, we can't identify that claim, so give us a bit more information. This is the process of making a claim shell. So I'm gonna say the date of injury was maybe August 1, and I'm gonna, I could fill in as much of this as I can, but ultimately, if, um, if you don't know this stuff, it's okay, as long as you're filling into things that are required, which is something that has an asterisk or especially this social security one. They don't like to mess around with that one. So we're going to go, it looks like out oh, here, this one date of birth has to be done. So hey, that was my it. social security number, Brian. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm just sharing, Chris. <laughs> let's put this person made is 92 August 21st. That's your birthday too, Chris. I'm a little bit older than that. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to give Chris a, an email. Hopefully we've got something there. And this is again, if I'm representing Chris or I'm representing the employer and insurer and I want to do a pleading on Chris's claim. So I've got to I be able to just now here here I have to do something with the asterisk there because I've got to plead against somebody. So if I've got a name, oh, I've got someone that can pop up. Let's use Alpha this and an insurer. I'm just gonna pick on SFM because it's easy.
now I'm back to the same place we were before. So now I'm under which party I want to do, and then what who am I serving, and what are the and what are the issues? So, um, oh, they don't like that. So that's okay. But the bottom, but the point of this exercise is that you ultimately can file whatever you want to file, and if it's not already in the system. The system will tell you that or if they can't locate the claim you want and you'll be able to move forward with it as a claim shell and you don't even have to know what a claim shell is really but know that that's what just happened when it asked me for the specific details of the claim that i was trying to plead to file a pleading on so that's the claim shell concept you don't have to do anything different you just follow the instructions either you know what the claim is and it'll take you to it or you don't know what it is and the system will build out a temporary file for you you can also amend a dispute because that's going to happen a lot obviously so if you wanted to amend a dispute you do a similar process and i'm not even going to demonstrate it because you guys can see what we're talking about here you're going to go into the submit a filing like you did before but in this case instead of choosing a new dispute you're going to amend a dispute and by entering a bit of information it's going to pull up the existing disputes the existing cases and you could pick which one you want to change. You can add a party, add an employer, add an issue, whatever you want to do, add some more exhibits. It can do all that, and then you submit it the same way we would have done before. All right. Mediation is something you can also add. Uh, or request. Like I said, we don't have a pleading, which is a request for mediation right now, but for consistency's sake, what we're doing is making a request for mediation kind of like an online form, like a request, like a rehab request or a request for cert. So you have to be now this now it, it says that to request a mediation, you have to have a dispute certified. Uh, now I I frankly am not positive about that, but if it is, then we can we can work with that. We'll get that. We'll get it certified for you. And you don't for mediation uh, dispute certification is not required, so it shouldn't. I'll, I'll do some testing to make sure, but it should not be part of the requirements for um, setting up a mediation or requesting one. Yep, I wouldn't have thought so, but it's there, so I draw attention to it. If you guys are trying to request a mediation and it and it uh, um, uh, it wants a cert, then just talk to us. And this would be an example where uh, you're going to have questions here. You guys all know, or most of you, or some of you may have worked with Aaron or me or Chris before, and you can certainly reach out to us. But there is a uh, a hotline dedicated to campus, which is going to go live on Tuesday the 25th or Wednesday the 25th. And that will be DLI staff who are there at your disposal to help you with any campus related issues. The information for how to get to that line is probably going to be posted on the website pretty soon, the DLI website. And if you've got a problem, if you've got a difficulty, give them a ring. And I just even want to put in a shameless plug that um, I will be in the Department of Labor and Industry office uh, the week of August 31st. So if you just want to reach out and talk to me and say hi, um, definitely feel <laughs> free to give me a call. So we'll have a special guest. Aaron himself is going to be on the hotline, just like a telethon, right, Aaron? You betcha. So and you can also make contributions <laughs> to the Aaron Fredrickson Retirement Fund at that time, too. <laughs> So one small difference about uh, the for the timing of filings uh, under campus is the filing of responses, a rehab response or a med response. As you all know, once a re once you get a rehab request or a med request filed, you guys can can toss out your responses the same day if you want, and that's and. But right now, what's going to happen is you won't be allowed to file a response until a conference is set. So that's only just a small little uh, a small little change in procedure. We're going to set conferences 
very quickly and sometimes like you guys may already know with rehab requests because we want to get those going as quick as possible we'll set a conference even before it's certified and then if we don't certify it then we'll just take the conference off so my guess is that similar to that we'll be getting these conferences put on the books real quick once we got a request and then by the time you have got your response ready hopefully uh, the conference will be there and you'll be able to get that response in Okay, now we have already talked about uh, seeing the issues when we're initiating a dispute, like I like I typed in, I just simply typed in the phrase, or I, I clicked a couple boxes that it's a, a rehab issue, and then I wanted uh, exploration of retraining. I just filled out the boxes as campus invited me to do it. Uh, as far as viewing the parties, the service, you saw all that. I was able to choose the parties and choose which ones get served. You saw how I added a QRC who wasn't already in the system and they would be served or their service would be done by mail. You can see other disputes on the claim. If you're in a claim and you see uh, and you're you're looking at one dispute, you'll be able to also see other disputes that might be existing at the same time. Like you might have a rehab request and a medical request all being consolidated to one admin conference. You'll still be able to see those two in campus. Just going to pause for a minute. Uh, Don Volk, thank you for giving for uh, <laughs> thank you for the clarification of my Gamgee last name I gave to Chris. Just going to pause for a minute, see if anyone's got any questions they want to throw out there on the chat board, chat on the message board for us all. Just took a drink of water. Sorry if you guys heard the glugging out of my water bottle there. Sorry about that, Aaron. You made me thirsty. <laughs> okay. Motions to intervene. These are filled out very similar to a dispute, to filing a dispute, and that you're going to pick the parties, pick the claim, and pick the details of it, but you will be doing it as an intervener. So it's going to be a little bit different, only a little bit different. I'm going to go back to our handy dandy uh, go straight to home button that Aaron love so what if we want to do a uh, a motion to intervene we're going to go under submit filing and in this case we're going to ask for access to a claim and we look at the drop downs motion to intervene pick that we're back to where we were picking the claim that you want to intervene on and once you pick it either it identifies it and you can move forward or it can't identify it and you will then manually enter in the details about the claim you want to intervene on so i'm not going to go through it through that whole process because um, again it's the point we want to kind of drive home for you all is that there's a lot of similarity between the different uh, processes we have. So it's going to look very much like what we just showed you. Think about the, the process of filing, locating the claim, making the decisions of what kind of a dispute you have, and following the buttons or following the data fields that it asks you to follow. All right. So, and with the uh, motion to intervene, just going to blow up a couple of these pieces here for you. You would say which uh, um, which party are you are you related to, which is understandable if you're going to be doing a motion in. Pain. You're going to be adding in different pieces, and it's going to walk you through one at a time. So you don't have to memorize all this. You don't have to write down in a notepad which blocks you're going to want to fill out in what order, because it will take you through in order. What's your information? What's the dollar you're looking for? What's the date of service, the date from, date to, all that information, it'll do one at a time for you. It's very self-explanatory. 
one more slide, just like in the other disputes that we showed you, it'll give you an option to do electronic service to anybody that's in that that's attached to that uh, to that claim. Okay, so I'm not going to do any more demonstration than that because again, this is a similar process to what we've what we're doing before and same with a notice of representation. If you want to file a notice of rep, you're going to go up to the claim access. I'll just show you that real quick. For handy dandy, go straight to home button up to our submit filing. Now, instead of initiating dispute, we're just going to access a claim. And what do we want to do? We want to submit an authorization. So it's going to get a few choices of who you are and just follow the information that it requests from you. And it'll tell you one at a time, one at a time, which one, uh, which piece of information and it's going to there's the similar uh, screen that you guys have all seen before about locating a claim very similar very consistent okay we're going to change gears a little bit here now talking a bit about schedule i showed you earlier on that the schedule the calendar in campus shows you the events that you're scheduled for. Events are those things which are dated. We're talking about your med conferences, your mediations. A med request is not an event. A med request is a dispute. A rehab or a request for mediation isn't an event. It's an action. But a mediation date, that's an event. And that's what's going to be on the calendar. All right, your, it, you can see in this top box of your dashboard how many events you've got, and you'll be able to see details of them in the calendar. I'm just going to blow this up a little bit. I don't have any events in my calendar in this test environment, and so I won't be able to show you any, but we'll, this is what they're basically going to look like. So you can go into your calendar and look by day, look by week, look by month. You can blow up each individual uh, event that you've been scheduled for or the lawyer you're working with has been scheduled for. You can open it up and you can actually send it into uh, a uh, .ics file over to your Outlook calendar to be tossed into your personal or your work calendar at the firm or whatever office, the QRC firm, whatever office you're at. So remember, the only things get put on on this calendar are the events that we schedule for you and else that you tell us needs to be put on this calendar. So we don't pull out of your Outlook calendars at your offices. So if you're going to be out of the office for a certain week at, for whatever the reason is, you will want to let us know so that we can put it on this calendar. And it also doesn't pull from page either, by the way. Sorry about that. Wish it would. Here's another look at that calendar shows you little shows you where there's little uh, icons that indicate that something is there on the calendar. Pretty self explanatory. Here's an example of the details of an event that you can pull up out of the campus calendar. And here's a little button that you should be able to use to send it over to export to your Outlook calendar. Now, we have an, in, an interesting concept that we talked a little bit in the uh, 201 training, I believe, and that's the concept of polling. Polling is something, is a, is a function that campus has. It's really an optional, well, it's, part of it is optional, part of it is just the way it's built, where you can choose, uh, you can 
uh, sync calendars or sync availability for when you're going to be picking a mediation date because as you know you guys don't uh, directly you know have a direct choice in when we pick a an admin conference date but for a mediation you do so the con the process of checking of letting everybody check their own calendars in campus for a mediation is called a poll so we're going to show you a little about that here Okay, when you do a request for mediation, it is going to automatically start a poll, which is again, start a calendar, uh, a calendar checking. So, and sorry, I, I mean, I know this is a little awkward here, but I figure it's easier for me to blow it up a little bit for you. So as soon as you do the request for mediation, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna set a date and time now or set up a poll to require everybody to find the best time? So what you can do is if you already know the date and time, like maybe you guys have talked by phone, maybe you guys have talked by email and you already know you want to do the mediation on September 2nd in the morning, then you can just tell it, tell campus, we can set the date and time right now and it lets you do that. Easy peasy, not a problem. Or if you're not sure and you want to, to have everybody look to see which when their availability might be, you can click this other box, which is send your availability to the poll. What you do then is you will, I'm gonna shrink this piece here. What you're now gonna do, again, this is if you want to do a poll, you will choose up to three mediators from our ADR staff You'll choose up to two, up to three dates and up to three times. And this is one that the person who requests the mediation will do this. So either times will be either morning or afternoon. So July 14th, morning or afternoon, 15th, morning or afternoon, 16th, same thing. And then once and you do you that- You can actually oh, check Chris, both morning. You can actually check both morning and afternoon. Can. Okay, thanks. So those are your choices. You got. You can pick three mediators. You can pick three dates and three, and the possibility of six times. And then you just submit it. And what will happen will be that a notice will go out to the other parties, and they will be given those options that the that the the initiating party sent, and they can send back their responses. Say yes, I can do here. No, I can't do here. No, I can't do any of them. If you guys find a date and time that works, well then you're good. If, if all the poll results come back and we don't find a match, then someone can do another poll. Or you could just say, you know what, let's figure this out by email, figure out a time we all like that we can go in and say, this is the time we want, this is the mediator we want to use. And this is the awkward part of the uh, teleconference where uh, Brian, Chris, and myself try to impress everybody on why they should start scheduling mediations with us. but. I digress. <laughs> so, uh, if you uh, you could you could plug some more if you want, Aaron. That's okay. Uh, by the way, after um, <laughs> the first week in September, my schedule is fairly open. So, um, just saying. Aaron is there for you to help you resolve your disputes. And so are Chris and I, of course. Yeah, and if you want somebody with 25 years of experience extensively in mediation and arbitration, I should be available in about three months time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so again, getting back to the polling, once you guys, once someone has initiated a what you want to do, again, this is what campus can do. You don't have to do this if you already know the date and time and mediator that you want to use. So you can you can respond to the poll and once everybody has filled, has responded, then our OAS staff, which as you, many of you may know Lori Herzog, who has been doing this diligently for a number, for a while now, uh, it might be her, it might be someone else, takes all the poll results and sees if we got a match. But one more time, this is optional. Campus can do it. If you already know the date, you already know the time, you already know the mediator, you just enter it in. No poll will be done. 
And with that amount of discussion, I don't um, we're not going to demo. We don't think I don't think that's necessary to go through starting a conference me initiating a mediation because again, it's going to be the same kind of a system, the same kind of a process for when you're doing a medical request or a rehab request. Adding the ISC file to the calendar, I've showed you where that will be at the top right hand corner when you're looking at the event in your outlook in your campus calendar. Now, integration with C track, we don't have um, we don't have uh, all of C tracks or sorry, all the C track events, but Chris, are you able to speak to that a little bit? Um, restate that, please. Are you able to speak to us a little bit on the extent of what integration we actually do have with C track? Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm part of the uh, OAH integration team. So, um, some folks at the Department of Labor and Judge Starr and Judge Wolkoff and some of the um, folks over at OAH, we're trying to kind of figure out how we can best interact together and share documents, share, um, you know, information. Currently, I can say that from our perspective at the Department of Labor, we can see OAH disputes and OAH documents. They will be migrated over to us, and I do believe vice versa. Um, just early this week, I was able to actually look at the first documents uh, from an OAH case file, and it looks good. It looks like it's going to work, but that's been in the test database. So we're not ever none of us are really going to know until august 31st so that's we're all kind of crossing our fingers and holding our breath so you're saying chris that the concept is that if someone wants to see um their 239 conference notices or their hearing notices they'll be able to see those through the dli campus site that's the plan but i have to mm -hmm. remind everybody that what oah handles you have to file with them with them and what the department handles, you have to follow with us. So make you know, make sure you know your jurisdiction because I don't know how long it's gonna take documents to show from one agency to the other. And we are separate agencies currently and we do have separate filing. And that's a good reminder for everybody, Chris, that this does not supersede C track. In fact, it doesn't change what C track requires of you at all. If you had to file a document with C track before, you still have to file that document with C track now. The campus is all about what how things are filed with DLI, and really one change is with WCCA. In W your the claims where WCCA has jurisdiction, like if someone wanted to file a uh, petition to vacate, that pleading can be filed through the campus website. And if there is a pending uh, appeal at WCCA, you will be able to see that in the campus website also to be able to submit your pleadings. Now, this is important though. What campus does not do it does not it does not allow you to file a notice of appeal in campus that is something that had to be done at oeh and so like we just said a couple of minutes ago what had to be filed at oeh today still will have to be filed at oeh after campus goes live so notices of appeal that get filed with oeh still get filed with oeh if you want to file a, uh, uh, a uh, petition for to vacate, that hasn't got anything to do with OAH, that you can file through campus and it'll go straight to the WCCA. Sound good, Chris? Or Aaron? Perfect, Vanna, thank you. <laughs> Brian, it just took me a few minutes to comment because, um, you know, you just completely blew me away. I mean, I, I couldn't have said it better myself, and I, I have a hard time, you know, letting someone else know that they're better than me. So you guys here. Are you, can, you can say that all you want, Aaron. I'm still not loaning you that 20 bucks. <laughs> I'll just ask Chris. Chris, can I get $20, please? You haven't paid me off the 50 <laughs> that I lent you last week. 
All right, so you can access, I'm not going to show you a demo because I don't have any demo WCCA cases in my in my uh, queue right now, but had you wanted to see them, you're going to pull them up in a similar way as you'd pull up anything else. You'd look in, look in the your cases or your claims and they'll be there. Petition to vacate, a similar thing for uh, as we've done before. You don't need a demo because it's going to be the same thing we've done. You want to submit a filing, you're going to pick petition to vacate, and then you're just going to follow through the, the prompts, fill everything out. If something's not there, it's going to prompt you to add just like for a medical request or a rehab request. And here too, you don't need to see it because you've seen it. You've seen it with the medical request. I, I can't stress enough. I don't want everybody to think that there's all these discrete processes for all these different pleadings because there aren't. Yes, each pleading is going to be a little bit different in what they ask for, but the concept is the same. You find the claim, you follow the prompt, the prompts. If you don't, if it can't pull up what you're looking for, you'll be able to enter it manually. It's a once you start uh, seeing that, then your your comfort will with campus will start to really go up exponentially. And you won't be feeling like you need to look up every uh, different kind of pleading in that large manual. You'll just be focusing in on a couple of key functions that you're going to do. And with that, Congratulations, you guys have made it through a dispute resolution in campus. We've come in at about one hour under our hour 20 minute uh, um, estimate. We are going to be staying, Chris, Aaron and I, until we see if there's that there's no more questions that anyone might want to ask, putting them on the chat. Make sure you type it into everyone. If, any, if you guys want to drop off now and go to the DLI website and get that manual and start perusing that, getting ready for August 31st, you're welcome to. If you guys want to stay on for a little bit, we'll stay here until we're confident that no one's got any more questions. Have a great day, everyone. Stay safe. You know, just kind of.